Well, I got interested in this weather and climate kind of problem fairly young. I grew up in Southern California and it was the 1982-83 El Nino. It was just constantly raining all winter long. A little bit like this winter in California. During El Nino, you can have a lot of these atmospheric rivers and it's just these intense plumes of moisture that dump intense amounts of rainfall and it would be a deluge. Of course, our basement flooded and my father, a very frugal man, had a pump that required supervision. And so you would have to babysit the pump. You couldn't let it run dry and you couldn't let the basement flood. So my introduction to weather and climate was living with El Nino. Of course, when I went to college, my father bought an electric pump that didn't require any supervision, but that's beside the point. You can combine these two. I was really interested in mathematics, but I was also really concerned about how can I bring my interest and passion about mathematics to bear on something that affects people's lives. Weather and climate is uh, just a natural fit, and uh, that's the direction I pursued. Can I help people avoid that risk of loss of life? Can I give them early warning? That's something that you can get pretty excited about in bringing your math skills and your understanding of physics to solve that problem. Once my father bought that pump, <laughs> I moved to San Diego to go to college and I was weighing between pure math and applied math and I got some good advice from my dad. He said, if you really wanna save the world, go applied. And so I was an applied math major in college and then I went to graduate school at the University of Maryland and uh, meteorology and oceanography was a, a, just a natural fit. Once I finished graduate school, uh, my PhD advisor offered me this incredible postdoctoral opportunity. He said to me, Ben, you've got five years. Just do something good. What do you want to work on? And I said, let's make a model to predict El Nino. So we were part of a team of a bunch of scientists that were the first to develop a model. And we predicted the 1997-98 El Nino well in advance. That took a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of people, and I've worked on that problem quite a bit since. It's just a fantastic problem to work on. The reason I came to the University of Miami was really two things. One was I was really looking for an academic program that attracted the best and brightest students and had a nice niche for me to fit into. So Miami had uh, a great team that studies climate variability and change, but they were missing the prediction science component. I was constantly thinking about how do we understand how the different components of the climate system, how the ocean and the atmosphere interact, how the atmosphere and the land interact, how the ice interact, how all of these things interact to give you the possibility to predict even beyond a few months, two, three years out into the future, a decade out into the future. And so we started to really think about those things and develop predictive capability that you can sort of think as a bridge between what we worry about in terms of climate change going out to the mid-century and beyond and something in between, something that goes maybe a decade out. And then we also started to look the other way. When we think about El Nino, it's more like what's gonna happen three to six months from now. We also started to get really interested in how do we make a prediction three to four weeks from now that's really about a rapidly emerging natural hazard or a flash drought in the West where it can be severe lack of rainfall for a two week period? Can we predict extreme winds and, and moisture deficits that promote fire? The future is can we predict the state of the climate system from days to decades? When I think about why the Middleton chair is so important to me, one of the things that I really want to do is make the prediction science actionable science so that people can make decisions based on that information. And that's a locally relevant problem. So this is an opportunity to do high risk, high payoff science that has a direct local relevance. It can help local decision makers when they have to make decisions from days to decades. Think about the number of billion dollar plus disasters have been happening around the U.S. Those have been steadily increasing. My sense of urgency is if we can do a better job of predicting the potential onset of these hazards and save lives and money, this is a, a tremendous contribution. One of the things I think about it is how to mentor students. I had a great example of incredible mentorship. He was so generous and open, and it's that kind of openness that I try to share with my students. We have responsibility to educate the next generation of scientists that are gonna solve these problems that are getting more and more serious and difficult to deal with. We need to produce the people that are gonna solve the problems. Well, okay, so I hope my students are very successful. 
in saving the world. I think that would be my legacy.